Now, the October surprise um, is um, in 1980 when uh, Reagan and Bush uh, were running against Carter and Mondale. Um, as you know, the hostages were still <clears throat> uh, in Iran, in Tehran, and um, uh, then Vice President, or then uh, Bush, um, took an uh, an airplane uh, to Paris to meet not with the Khomeini, but a representative of the Khomeini. And the deal was, um, if the Khomeini would delay the release of the hostages uh, until. Reagan's inauguration that the Reagan Bush administration would supply him uh, the Ira Iranian regime unlimited guns and ammunition throughout their administration which would go from 1980 till 1988. My uh, part in that was to deliver those guns and ammunition from Tel Aviv to uh, Tehran. Um, I, the reason I brought this up is that big sheath of papers over there is the details of who was flying and uh, how they pulled the whole thing off. The way they pulled it off is uh, Bush left Saturday night on a back 111 jet, which only took about six or seven hours to get there. He only spent about four or five hours in the meeting, and then he was flown back in an SR-71 from a base in France to McGuire Air Force Base, and uh, it only took an hour and 14 minutes. That way he was able to show up for a tennis appointment that he had on uh, Sunday and that the press would have not known of the, um, of the uh, lapse in time or the trip. And as it turned out, uh, they were elected and they supplied these guns and ammunition. And that was, you know, part of the Iran-Contra, but Congress never went back as far, uh, farther than 1985 to find out when it originally started. And when I moved to uh, Egypt in uh, 1981, that was going to be my job: was to take those uh, arms and ammunition from uh, Israel, from Tel Aviv uh, to Tehran. They were coming into Tel Aviv from Zaragoza, our air force base in Spain, and Mossad was handling the whole thing. Um, the reason I never did fly a flight, and the reason was the first airplane in. Uh, was a uh, uh, Argentinian CL-44, and what that they wanted to do was use an old turboprop airplane to be sure everything went fine and there were going to be no problems. And for some reason, it got shot down on its way out, and it got shot down over Russia, about 40 miles south of Yerevan, and, which is well inside Russia. And the Mossad couldn't figure out how the people, the pilots got off course, they were on their way out, they had dropped a load, or, you know, already um, <clears throat> let the, dumped the arms and ammunition off, and um, 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 they finally figured out that what must have happened is the pilots were intercepted by the Russian MiGs, who knew what was going on and didn't like it, <clears throat> and uh, the pilots thought, well, you know, might as well follow them because we've got nothing on board. They can't prove anything. And then as soon as they got them over Russia, it just shot us, their ass down, which was a message to Mossad, hey, we, we don't want this to go on. So uh, th that big sheath of papers, you know, was the history behind the um, October Surprise. There were two books, one Gary Sick and Barbara Honaker each wrote books about it. Uh, Congress uh, went as far as to actually launch an official investigation in 1990, but it was all covered up because, you know, nobody wanted to go back that far, hear any more stories about that thing. But <clears throat> the hostages did, sp did spend, see, October, November, December, an extra three, uh, four months there. there so Reagan the, could be elected. Right. Incredible and, stuff. And uh, a lot of people know this story, but, you know, it's been, what, 30 years and Pretty much everybody is fine. The only reason I brought it up is because I'm putting that the history there of who the pilots were and 